Hey guys, it's Mrs. Stickler again. It's Friday night at 7 o'clock and I'm at the school. So I thought I would come and do a couple of videos for you. First of all, we already had done, this is 11-2. We did 1, 2, and 3 here. Of course, we didn't find everything for 3, but if you go back and look at what we did, you should be able to figure out how to do each of those others. But I wanted to just kind of talk for a second about four. I know you're supposed to do odds, but I want you just to see this. This red shape is the base of this um, prism. Notice that there's the height, and that the height is four meters. So that's the height. So if it wants me to find the surface area, that's going to be the base that I've got to find the area of. So as you're doing this, be aware that the surface area of these figures, it's very important to identify where the base is. Now on this, this is a cube, so it doesn't matter which side is the base because they're all the same. But on this one, it's giving you um, another parallelogram prism and you can use either of the formulas that we talked about today. You can choose to use this one, or you could choose to use this one. And they're both on the formula sheet. You're going to get the same answer on these two, regardless of which for the two formulas you choose. But if you have a problem like this, where the base is not a parallelogram, you must use that formula right here. SA, the surface area, equals the height times the perimeter, plus 2B. 2, and notice that's a capital B, and remember the capital B is the area of the base. But <clears throat> I wanted to come down and look at number 8 because I think this is a great question. It's a great question because it requires you to think about the types of questions you're going to have on the SOL. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here on this just because I think you can see it a little bit better. Notice he creates a right prism whose bases are regular pentagons. Okay, so if I were to draw this, I would draw a pentagon. And I would think about this being a prism. What that word right means is that it's per that this, all the heights are going to be perpendicular. There's a right angle here between the vertex and, the, and this side coming up. He wants to paint the lateral surfaces. So he's not painting the pentagon top or bottom. He's just going to paint the sides. One can of paint can cover 30 feet squared. How many cans of paint must he buy if the height of the prism is 15 feet high and the length of each side of the pentagon is 5? And we know that the height here is going to be 15. So let's write our formula down. And let's see if we can't do this problem. I know that the surface area equals the height times the perimeter plus 2b. But do I want surface area? No, this is the first time we've actually had to use lateral area. So when you look here, you see lateral area is much easier. It's just the height times the perimeter. So I'm going to adjust this formula. Now we're finding the lateral area. And then we're going to drop these bases because that's just the difference. Either we're adding the bases or we're not. So lateral area is going to equal the height. Well, what's the height of this prism? It's 15 feet. What is the perimeter of the base? 5 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 25. Now, what is my lateral area? 15 times 25. So the lateral area is 375 feet squared. But it's not asking me for the lateral area. It wants to know how many cans of paint do I need. One can of paint covers 30 feet. So now I know how many total feet I have. I want to figure out how many 30 feet I've got. So I'm going to divide this by 30 feet squared, and it's going to give me how many cans of paint I need. 
So I take 375 and I divide it by 30 and I'm going to get 12 and a half. Well, can I buy a half a gallon of paint? No. So I'm going to have to round up. So this equals 12.5 cans. So it requires 13 cans of paint. And that's actually your answer. It isn't asking for sure you know, about the lateral area number. It wants to know how many cans of paint. This is a real life application of what you would need to do lateral area. And we do lateral area all the time when we are homeowners because we paint our houses. So let's look at the back here. Now we're to cylinders. Cylinders are super fun. I like cylinders. I know some people don't because cylinders are pretty easy. Now in these we're finding surface area. My surface area is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. I hope I had that up there. I did. There's the formula. And I want this one right here. Okay. So the surface area, let's do number 10 since it's an even and I know you're going to have an odd here. The surface area equals, and they've got it written right here too, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r squared. Oh, rh, I'm sorry. I thought that's really weird. We don't have that. And we need the 2 here too. So we're finding the cir the area no the circumference and multiplying it by the height. So you're finding the outside piece here. Remember I talked about the fact that you're really finding the base, the base being the circumference. Because remember in this shape, the net looks like this. Let me see if I can't get the net out really quick. But here's my net. Let me zoom out a second. Here's the net of a cylinder. So this is my circumference of the circle, and when I do this, look, the cylinder completely is the circumference of the circle. So what we're really doing is finding the circumference of this circle, because that's this length, and we're multiplying it by how tall the, the cylinder is. So surface area is going to equal 2 pi, now what's your r? The diameter is 18. The diameter is 18. What is the radius? Well, half of 18 or 9. What is my height? 20. 2 still, pi still. We said our radius is 9. The good news is you can just type that whole thing right in your calculator. 2 pi 9 20 I'm just putting making sure it's all multiplication plus 2 pi 9 squared and that is the surface area of this figure. Now that's in millimeters but I think it's kind of cool when you think about those cylinders that that's what they really equal. That seems like a huge number to me. Doesn't that seem like a huge number to you? I'm looking here making sure I put it in right. 2 pi r h. Okay, plus 2 pi r squared. Yeah. Let's do each piece because that doesn't quite feel right to me. That feels a little bit big. That's 2 pi times 9 times 20. And then we're going to add 2 pi times 9 squared. So we're going to add those together and we get 1639 mm -hmm. when we round that all up. So that would be the area, the surface area of this figure. That's a lot. 
And I'm kind of feeling like I'm not real happy with that answer. But I may come back to that one at another time because I'm not sure why I'm not happy about it. 2 times 9 times 20 equals that's 360 pi. And then we have 81, because that's 9 squared times 2, which is 162 pi. Oh, we're leaving this answer in terms of pi. Okay, that's the difference. I'm looking at the answer key and I'm thinking, well, that's kind of ugly. So when I add 360 plus 162, I get 522 pi. And that works. But when you multiply that all the way out, we get, let's see here, what did I figure that was? Times pi. And we get 1639.9 millimeters squared. So that would be right. Okay. This is finding lateral area of the cylinder. So the lateral area would not include this base or this base. But we still are going to need to know this radius and this height. So let's look at our formula sheet. Where's my lateral area? It's 2 pi r h. And that equals lateral area. Well, the 2 is not going to change, the pi is not going to change, the radius is 3, and the height is 6. Very simple, right? Just put it in a calculator. Let's leave this in terms of pi, just for the heck of it. So 2 times 3 times 6. So this lateral area is 36 pi inches squared. And then you could multiply pi through if you wanted to. Pretty awesome. These are all going to be the same. I think you're good here on finishing up 11.2. I'm going to go ahead and pause this video, and then I'm going to come back and start 11.3 in just a minute.